Hello and welcome back to the Three Pillars Podcast. I'm your host, Chase Tobin, a.k.a. Tobinator the Motivator. And this is episode 54, Tribulation. Guys, welcome back to the Three Pillars Podcast. This is where we focus on using those three pillars of fitness, spiritual, physical, and mental fitness to grow closer together on our walk with the Lord. And I appreciate you guys being on this walk with me. It's been a fantastic journey and uh, one that I think we can really help echo out through the ages, all right? So all that being said... Um, I thank you very much for tuning in. I thank you for the shares. I thank you for the comments. Hope you guys are doing well this week. Um, this week, we're going to be talking about tribulation, a little bit of a uh, piggyback off of last week when we talked about prosperity. So we're going to get into that in a little bit. I'm going to be turning to Spurgeon again because it's just, it, it's, if you don't have this book or a copy of this or aren't reading this online, uh, you really need to because about every daggone word um, in this devotional has been awesome. It's, it just, it's really speaks to me. And it's a lot of content, a lot of things we can talk about uh, to get to all grow closer together on this walk. Um, before we get into a quick word of prayer and start into our little uh, discussion this week, I just want to say thank you again. If you're watching this on YouTube or Rumble, please share it. Leave me a comment. Let me know how you're doing. Like it, upvote it, whatever is going on, uh, whatever platform you're on. If you're on the podcast platforms, Anchor, App, Apple, Amazon, Spotify, uh, please drop us a like, a review, so we can get boosted into ratings and get up there and 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 really uh, get broadcasted out to the world. Got a lot of international folks. Shout out to you guys. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, let me know you know exactly where you guys are from. I appreciate uh, you know, hearing from you guys. All that being said, we're going to jump right into it. Talk about tribulation, but first, a quick word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the blessings you give us, for the troubles that you give us, Lord. For through the trouble, we know that you are an ever-present help in our trouble. And that no matter how far down we fall, you will always be there to pick us right back up, Lord. Thank you for being there. Thank you for giving us the tools to get back up on our feet, for giving us the people, the books, and just your presence, Lord, that just indwells within us and makes us mighty champions for you in this realm. Lord, I ask that you give me the eyes, or the words to say this evening, give anybody tuning in the eyes to see, the ears to hear, and the heart to receive anything and everything that's edifying and grows, grows them closer to you, Lord. I ask this in your most heavenly name. Amen. Bam. <clears throat> so, we're going to jump right into it. This is from the May 3rd, May 3rd morning uh, devotional for Spurgeon, and it's going to be about tribulation, our Scripture is John 16, verse 33. In the world ye shall have tribulation. And this is what Spurgeon writes. Art thou asking the reason of this believer? Look upward to thy heavenly Father and behold him pure and holy. Dost thou know that thou art one day to be like him? Wilt thou, thou easily be conformed to his image? Wilt thou not require much refining in the furnace of affliction to purify thee? Will it be an easy thing to get rid of thy corruptions and make thee perfect even as thy Father which in heaven is perfect? Next, Christian, turn thine eye downward. Dost thou know what foes thou hast beneath thy feet? Thou, once, thou wast once a servant of Satan, and no king will willingly lose his subjects. Dost thou think that Satan will let thee alone? No, he will always be at thee, for he, quote, goeth about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, end quote. Expect trouble, therefore, Christian, when thou lookest beneath thee. Then look around thee, where art thou? Thou art in the enemy's country, a stranger and a sojourner. The world is not thy friend. If it be, then thou art not God's friend. For he who is the friend of the world is the enemy of God. Be assured that thou shalt find foemen everywhere. When thou sleepest, think that thou art resting on the battlefield. When thou walkest, suspect an ambush at every hedge. As mosquitoes are said to bite strangers more than natives, so will the trials of earth be sharpest to you. Lastly, look within thee, into thine own heart, and observe what is there. Sin and self are still within. Ah, if thou hadst no devil to tempt thee, no enemies to fight, and no world to ensnare thee, thou wouldst still find thyself evil enough to be a sore trouble to thee. For, quote, the heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked, end quote. Expect trouble then, but do not despond on account of it. For God is with thee to help and strengthen thee. He hath said, quote, I will be with thee in trouble. I will deliver thee and honor thee, end quote. 
real powerful stuff right there. The most important part is there at the end. The Lord says, I will be with thee in trouble. I will deliver thee and I will, and honor thee. So no matter what comes at you from any of these angles, he, in, in this he talks about, Spurgeon talks about looking all around. It's just like being on a battlefield, having situational awareness. Look up, look, le look left, look right, look down. Trouble's everywhere. There are foes everywhere. There are people always going to challenge you. They're going to challenge your faith. They're going to challenge your the, the morals and, and and the morals that you stand upon, the, the foundation that you you know build up this uh, prosperous life, like we talked about last week. They're going to challenge it. And the reason they want to challenge it is because your inner light, the light of the Lord that radiates through you, irritates them because. They really, really want that at the end of the day, but they are either too prideful to admit that they want it or they're too, I don't say too far gone, but they're so far gone that that light bothers them because there's a lot of darkness in their heart. Light will always drive out the darkness, but the darkness, and think about the shadows in this room right now. The light's shining, but there's little dark crevices creeping around where the light can't get to. That's why the light has to move. It's got to get into there or cut the light on. Everything is, is illuminated through the light. Then that light is Jesus. So, that being said, again, just like being on a battlefield, you got to always wear your armor. We talk about putting on the armor of God every single day, covering yourself from head to your to your feet, getting your shield and your sword, and get ready to go to battle every single day. It sounds tiresome, it sounds wearisome, but that's what it's about. There is struggle, there is tribulation. That's part of our journey here on earth. When you get to the point where you realize you have control of your actions, like little kids and stuff, you know, they, you know, they know a little bit about right and wrong, but they don't quite get it yet. But there it gets to a point in your life when you know unequivocally you did something wrong or you know you did something right. You know right and wrong. You know good and bad. You know what actions are you going to take and what consequences there could possibly be. That's part of the struggle. That's part of this tribulation that you're going to get into every, um, every day of your life. But the more and more you prepare for it, the more and more you pray, the more and more you read the good things, the more and more you train your body to be strong and um, and able to endure these hardships, the more you do that, the better off you will be when the adversity hits. Because you're going to have times when you're just peak prosperity. Man, I'm doing so good. I can give to a lot of people. Everything's great. And then there's going to be times where you're just going to come down into that slump. But if your prosperity level is way up here and you get dropped down here, you're still doing pretty good. But sometimes you find yourself in the dumps and you got to figure out a way to get out of it. How do you do that? We talked about it last week. Somebody throws you a lifeline. The Lord throws you a lifeline. He throws you a book. He throws you something to help get you through that tribulation. But he does say that you're going to have it. John 13, 30, 16, 33, in the world ye shall have tribulation. And that's just because of the fallen state that we are in. But we can take that tribulation we can pray upon it when it happens we can take take those troubles and pray upon them then when they show up and you can give them to the lord and he will deliver you very in there i will deliver thee and honor he will the lord the creator of the universe will deliver and honor you while you're in trouble all you have to do is ask and he's going to help you and you have to repent of whatever wickedness you found yourself into the 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 last part, um, when Spurgeon talks about look within yourself. If all the enemies around you are defeated, there's nobody left, you're still going to have to battle your inner trouble, your inner tribulation. Everybody sins. Everybody struggles with sin on varying degrees, right? But some people have different vices and different sins and things like that. But sin is sin is sin is sin is sin. Everybody has to deal with their own inner turmoil. And the way you deal with your inner turmoil is you give it to the Lord. The way you deal with your external turmoil and troubles and tribulation, you give it to the Lord. Keep your armor on. Don't let the devil even have a chance. Keep your armor maintained. Help others to put their armor on. Maintain their armor. That way we form this, this phalanx, this shield wall of people that's constantly moving, this shield wall of, of Holy Spirit indwelled, light-filled beings that march forward in a phalanx to those dark corners of the world and drive out the darkness that's what we're supposed to do people who are experiencing tribulation uh 
in other places, even in you just think about your own community. People who are experiencing tribulation in your own community, whether it's your physical community, your online community, whatever it is, if people are experiencing turmoil and tribulation in whatever community you are in, be that light for them. Be that strength for them to go forth and drive out their darkness and help them drive out the darkness in their life. That's what it gets down to when we're talking about tribulation, driving out the darkness, enduring the hardships. You might find yourself surrounded by, by darkness, but if you've got the lantern, he will be the light to your path, right? That way you can keep the darkness at bay. And eventually that light will shine so radiant that it will be like morning. It will be like the sun's out all day long because there won't be any more darkness. <laughs> we'll get there one day. But we can't do it without Jesus. Can't do it without, without each other. What good is the kingdom of heaven? What good is there a kingdom of, of, of Christians and, you know, and believers in, in, the, in the Lord Most High if, if nobody else is around to, to be in the kingdom? So that's your charge, is to go out and bring more people to the fold. So how does this fit, how we physically endure? You, you train, you train your body, you get yourself right. When you're, in the, when you're in the military, I was in the military, right? You had to train your body to endure the physical hardships. We hiked all over creation and it, it, it was hard at first, but as you train and build up to it, it becomes easier and easier and easier. Same thing with mental. Oh, it's so hard mentally. Why is it so hard mentally? Why is it so hard mentally? It might be hard at first, but if you can figure out how to endure a little bit at first and figure out strategies to uh, withstand the tribulations in your life, it gets easier and easier and easier. When you see all this crazy stuff going on in the world, everybody's stressing out, freaking out with their hair on fire, running around in circles, and you're just like, man, I can, I can see what's going on because you've been given clarity and you can help extinguish those fires and help, dude, snap out of it. We got this. Being able to be have, have that clarity and pay attention is huge. And then you'll finally spiritual tribulation. You're going to find yourself in contests of faith. Con, um, yeah, contests of faith, conf conflicting conflictions in your faith. Yeah. I'm, I'm struggling to find the, find the term, but you're going to find times where your faith is going to be challenged. Let's put it that way. And that's not somebody necessarily persecuting you. That might be somebody testing. You might be the Lord sending you a test. It might be somebody really trying to thinking that they're, they're, you know, and we're not, we're, again, we're not out here trying to beat people in the head with Bibles, but there's going to be people who are going to challenge your faith and they're doing it because they think their beliefs are, are different than yours. And it's not about a contest about winning, you know, because you have to crush that other person. It's because you need to be able to stand on your foundations and in your beliefs and understand that people, other people have different beliefs, but yours are rooted in the way, the truth and the life. And if you have to respectfully disagree with somebody and maybe they have a point that you're like, oh man, I don't know. Um, you know what though? I'm going to go take your point. I'm going to go uh, really think about it and see if it actually fits in with scripture one way, shape or form. And it's okay to do that. Um, if something challenges your faith, puts you through that spiritual turmoil and tribulation, go figure out why. Find it in the scripture. Talk to your pastor. Talk to uh, somebody who's a theologian. Or, or a Bible scholar or something. How does this, how does this, whatever this idea over here that has challenged my faith, how can I frame this in scripture or drive it out based upon its, its contradiction with scripture? It's fine to do that. Spiritual tribulation, you can get through it, I promise. <laughs> we can get through it all together because I will be with thee in trouble and I will deliver and thee and honor thee. God's going to deliver you from whatever trouble you're in. You just got to let him. You just got to let him. That simple. Jesus loves you. All of you. Now, yesterday, and forever. Guys, that's all I got. Thank you for tuning in this week. Um, may the Lord bless you and keep you this week. Uh, if you are in tribulation, if it's so bad, reach out for help. Pray to the Lord and he will deliver you. But it may not always be how you think. He's not necessarily going to swoop down from heaven, pick you up, and hold you in his arms. He's doing that all the time anyways. So he might have to send you something that's maybe outside of your own narrow perception of things. So don't don't be on the lookout for that sign of salva salvation, that sign of grace, that sign of, of help. And don't just 
stare at the ground all day long thinking, oh, nobody's here to help me. You may have help that's been dropped all around you. You just have to be um, discerning enough to see it. Guys, we're going to end this with a quick word of prayer. Take you out to a phenomenal weekend. All right. Heavenly Father, thank you again for this day. Thank you for the blessings you give us each and every day, Lord. Lord, I ask that you uh, give us tribulation, give us trouble, that we may test our, our might, test our strength, test our wills, test our, our faith, that we may come closer to you, Lord, and that get to a point where we can help test others and bring them closer to you, Lord. Lord, give us that strong foundation Give us strength, increase our faith every day, and give us peace in this tumultuous world that we can just sail the waters, the, the sail the waters with you at the helm, Lord. Lord, I ask that you bless anybody tuning into this. Give them peace in your holy name. Amen. Guys, again, thank you for tuning in. This is the Three Pillars Podcast. I'm Chase Tobin. I appreciate each and every one of you. Please share this if you uh, find it of value. And let me know uh, in the comments or let me know offline or anything what you think, what we can do to make this better. And if you've got a topic you want to talk about, let me know. All right. God bless you all. Tobinator out.